Hi, if you're new here, we're Emma, Jack, and Poppy, and we are currently in the beautiful town of Juno, exploring everything it has to offer. So let's get out and let's live a little and let's have a fantastic day. Alaska! Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are heading into Juneau today, and we did not book an excursion through NCL. We are doing stuff on our own, so it's a little bit play it by ear, see what we can do. And we rented a Jeep, and so we're gonna go and explore Juneau today. Let's have a fantastic day. And today is Jack and I's anniversary, so let's have an even better day. Emma's been lucky for seven years now. Seven whole years. Seven years. Let's go. What did you get? You found what? Ducky. A ducky. Can we see him? Yeah. Oh, is he cute? He's a little camping ducky. He's ready for s'mores and a campfire. We just left Poppy at the kids club. She's gonna have fun for about 30 to 40 minutes. We did breakfast in the main dining room. It took forever this morning. And now, I don't know, I guess we're gonna go sit and look at the scenery while we wait to get into Juno, but Poppy left and she had fun. She didn't care that much. Mom was okay. Kind of. Debatable. I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> we decided to go get a drink and head up to the observation lounge and look at the beautiful scenery. It may have been a very cloudy and overcast day, but there was something about those clouds going through the mountains that just made it so much prettier. So as we head into Juneau, let's talk some Juneau facts. It is Alaska's capital, but in 1906, the capital of Alaska was moved from Sitka to Juneau. Juneau shares its eastern border with the Canadian province of British Columbia, making it the only state capital to border another country. Granted, good portion of Juneau is actually glacier fields, and the whole municipality of Juneau is actually larger than the state of Rhode Island. Hello. It's cold outside. I just went to get some shots and whew, it's windy out there, but it is absolutely gorgeous. The like clouds are covering parts of the mountains and it's all like dusty and gloomy and cool looking. We're sitting in the lounge area where you've got the observation, so it's a nice day so far. Can't complain. A little cold, but nothing wrong with that. What do you think? It's super pretty. It's uh, a little different than May. Like May, it's almost almost springy. You can feel the fall in the air. It's yeah. kind of weird. I don't know how to explain it on that. Feels like fall. Yes. Pretty and there's though. snow caps. So in May, there's snow caps. And during the summer, they go away. But there's snow caps already. Yeah. And we're in September 24th. And I saw a whale. Yes, you did see a whale. We'll hopefully try and get one on video. But we've seen a few now. Yeah. If not, we'll use a shot from another one. There you go. <laughs> that was a big reef. You can see it kind of peeking up. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. I got it. Oh, there it goes, and I got it. Yay. Yeah. Better with the other spout. Oh, there it goes. Oh, why'd you turn it off? <laughs> oh, there's more. Oh, Jack. Hey. Gotta keep watching for it, bud. He's literally getting it on camera. Oh, there he goes. He keeps going. Sorry, it's a little blurry. It's on my phone. Got it. Go on. Uh, got it? Yep. The tail? Is the yeah. Tail yep. Got it. Oh, keep going. That's a side fin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's just splashing down. He's just splashing. He's having a party. Yeah. He's just waving, saying hi. Do you see a yeah. that? Yes. He's just He's flashing. Just He's just having a good old time. So we are out on our balcony right now. It's like 30 or 40 degrees outside. But we're sitting here and we were just watching whales breach. We just watched, oh, I just see one right now actually. But we were just seeing one that was just like playing and flapping its spin up and down in the air. And it is, it's, I mean, it's just so cool to see this. You don't need to pay for the excursion to see whales. You can literally just sit here and watch and see them. It's it's really, really cool. There we go. 
Juno is one of the best places in the world to see bald eagles with an estimated range of eagles between 15,000 to 30,000 in the Juno area. But granted, we did take a drive from Anchorage down to Homer and saw like hundreds of bald eagles. So I'm not so sure. They are Puppy and Emma. Do we just get off the boat? Yeah. yeah. Are we in Alaska? Is it pretty? Okay, let's go get Dada. Dada went to go get the car. Did we get off the boat? Yeah. Are we in Alaska? Yeah. What would you say when we got off? Wow. Alaska. <laughs> oh, it looks super pretty. I see Jack over there. He's coming to meet us. It's a little cloudy today, but it is beautiful. Let's go have fun. You see Dada? There's Dada! We're getting Poppy in it right now. Jack went to go pick it up. And we're gonna go and explore Juno a little bit. Let's go! In any given year, Juno can have as many as 900,000 cruise ship passengers and an additional 100,000 independent travelers. That's 1 million extra people or over 31 times the population of the year-round residents. You got some info since you picked the car up from the guy. What's, yep. what's your little fun Juno facts? Uh, there are currently, as of September 24th, uh, 2003, two furniture stores in the town of Juno. Uh, and come next week, there will be one. <laughs> one of them is going out of business. And then there are 12 Ubers that are part-time in Juno. Um, and if you're looking for a ride late at night and happen to be in Juno, uh, he said good luck. <laughs> Okay, well that's good to know, I guess. What are we doing right now? We are currently driving to, I don't know if this is two or not, but I assume it is. Yep, it is. I see a stop sign. That's why I said I didn't think it was two lanes, because there was a car coming at us and it is tight. Sorry, what are we doing? We're driving to the Last Chance Mining Museum that's about 15 minutes outside of the port. And can we just mention how awesome it is to dock close to the town? Yeah, so we are on a small ship with NCL, in case you've missed that. And usually we've been on the big ones, so it's about a mile and a half walk into downtown. Well, right now we are on the NCL Sun, which is small, and it docks like in the most... Wow, this is really steep. Whew. The NCL Sun docks like right across from where the tram is. So we literally we got right off and you're in downtown. So much more convenient. So nice. Let's go and explore since we now have a car and usually when we do this we are just walking around. So we rented this car via the Turo app. Um, we got a Jeep Wrangler. There were a few on there. It was about a hundred and fifty dollars after you paid for insurance and the rental for the day. And the guy graciously came and picked us up and then he will drive us. We'll pick him up on our way back and he'll drop us back at port, but super easy. Much more affordable than doing an excursion. And we are currently driving in the mountains in a Jeep in Alaska, which is pretty awesome. It's pretty right now. Avalanche area. Oh, that's not reassuring. We see that in Colorado all the time though. The leaves are starting to change, which is pretty too. This is a wooden bridge. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, you are right. It is a wooden bridge. Oh man. We are crossing a wooden bridge. An avalanche side. Wow. The Last Chance Mining Museum is in an old compressor building associated with the former Alaska Juno Gold Mining Company that operated from 1912 to 1944. The museum features one of the world's largest air compressors and other artifacts associated with hard rock gold mining. And if the museum is open, it is $5 to go and check it out. I'm gonna go look at an old mining place? That sounds fun. The views are really nice already. Other than there's a porta potty right there. <laughs> but this is really, really pretty. I would definitely recommend at least getting out and exploring a little bit of Juno and not just doing Old Town if you can in the downtown. So we came to it and it looks like it's closed and there's a chain on the gate. 
but up at the natural historic district, the old mine camp, it's up there. Old rail cars just left in the woods here. How cool are these? They're still on the tracks. open. I don't know if you could be able to see that, but there's like a seat there. How cool is this? Like the old rail cars from when this was still a mining, active mine. And then the old rails are still here. And then I found a little three-year-old. Is this cool? Cool. This is so cool, the old rails from the miners. This is where they found gold. Ooh. This is what they used to get the gold out of the mountains and up so they could sell it. How cool is that? Wow! If you had a gold pan, you could search for gold here it looks like. So they've got it all set up so you could scoop up some dirt and sift it and see if you found anything. It's pretty cool. It's just beautiful here by the river with the mountains and everything. Pick you up. So we just got back in the car from the mining museum. Didn't cost us anything. We kind of walked around and explored a little bit. If you have a car, I would definitely recommend it because it was a really quick drive to get here and it was just pretty to get out into nature and see some of the old mining stuff. I think it's about five miles from downtown, so I guess technically you could walk it, but I don't know if that would be worth it because that's a good walk for like I don't know would we spend 15 minutes maybe exploring a little bit so bring your gold pan bring your gold pan if you got one because that would be cool to do but we saw somebody doing it so that would be kind of fun but yeah there must be like an excursion or something though. so what's next are we gonna do Alaska Brewing Company or are we gonna do Mendenhall Glacier let's try to do Mendenhall Glacier yeah yes okay let's go check that out see if it's for mixed things. Center. At least the visitor center. I don't know how far we walk because I think it's a two mile for the actual glacier if you were to want to walk as close as you can get to it. So let's go check that out. We got a car anyway, so we might as well ch go check it out as much as we can. Gold Street. Gold Street. Gold Street. Think of another fun tidbit. Yeah, there's 40 miles of highway in and around Juneau. Um, that is not connected to any other part of the state or country um, because this is the only state capital that you cannot drive to. You have to take a ferry, a ship, or plane. a plane. Only 40 miles, that's fascinating. Yeah. You are downtown, say by like Tracy's Crab Shack, so like right by the water from downtown. It is about a 20 minute car ride to Mendenhall Glacier, like the visitor center. About mm, 12, 13 miles about. So just in case you're taking a cab, good to know. Glacier? We saw it. We saw it. Pretty view. Pretty view from right here. It looks so it's much pretty different blue. than the videos. I'm sorry, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Mendenhall Glacier is a 13 mile long river of ice that ends on the far side of Mendenhall Lake. It is over 13 miles long like I said and it drops 4,500 feet from top to bottom. It is the only glacier in southeast Alaska that has access by road. Since 1929 the glacier has peeled back 1.75 miles. It is about 0.6 miles to the visitor center to see the glacier from there. And then from that area, there are several other hikes you can take, such as a one mile hike to Nugget Falls or a 3.5 mile hike to East Glacier Trail Loop with a 500 feet of elevation gain. It's raining a little harder now, but we saw Mendenhall Glacier. We went to just the visitor center, which for us with 
poppy was plenty. I don't think we needed to go very much farther. We walked a tiny bit. Great views from the visitor center and we could also see the waterfall from the visitor center. If you rent a car and drive there's parking right next to the visitor center and then there's another lot about a couple hundred yards further down the road if that one's full. The only other way to get here is by doing a tour and if you don't do a tour then you have to take a bus if you didn't rent a car obviously and the bus drops you off I want to say it's like 0.8 to miles or about of a walk to get to the visitor center so if it's pouring rain just keep that in mind that you may have to walk a little bit to get to it you can rent a taxi yes but i don't think there's that many taxis in this town no there's only 12 ubers <laughs> there's more than 12 taxis in this place yes so they just pass like six going towards that is the glacier. true you, so you can always obviously do a taxi as well but just stuff to keep in mind if you are doing this i mean Personally, I'm a huge fan of the way we're doing it just because we get to go at our speed. The other option is taking the big blue bus, which looks like this, and it is $45 per adult. Kids under 12 are $35, and that's for round trip. It leaves every 30 minutes, runs from eight to six, you don't get a ticket based off of the time. You kind of just go there and wait. But this is the kind of other option that you have if you wanted to go to Mendenhall Glacier. Now we are back in the car, obviously, and we are heading to another brewery that Jack found. Forbidden Peak Brewing is where we are going. We're on the Glacier Highway. To... Yep. So we just pulled up and it's closed. But it does look really cute if you have a car and can get here. It's got a really nice view, too. Oh, well. We'll go do something else. There's a bunch of bald eagles just sitting on light posts. Bald eagle, bald eagle. So since that other brewery was closed, we are heading to Alaska Brewing Company right now. We'll show you what it looks like. Alaskan Brewing Company, their tasting room is open year round. It is about five miles from downtown Juneau. They have about 20 beers on tap and all of the beer is brewed and bottled in the facility in Juneau. If you are downtown, there is the Alaskan Brewing Depot where you can buy merch. If you want to try their beers, you have to go to Alaskan Brewing Public House, which is just down the street. The brewery was started in 1986 by 28-year-old Marcy and Giroff Larson. It was the 67th independent brewery in the country and the first brewery in Juneau since Prohibition. While researching breweries, in Alaska, Mercy found records of the Douglas City Brewing Company from 1899 to 1907. It listed their ingredients for a beer and they brewed a batch of the Gold Rush era beer and it was really good. And it is now their Alaskan Amber beer. Alaskan Brewing Company started with humble beginnings and has become one of the most award-winning craft breweries in history of the Great American Beer Festival and now distributes to 25 states. Uh, you must go to the Alaskan Brewing Company. It was super cool setup. Um, I would say that the address that it drives you to is not the address that you need to go to. It's on the other side of the street, so the next street over. Um, so just be aware of that. There was also a sign on the door that said the correct address. Correct. Um, there also look to be food trucks, like four or five food trucks that must be set up at certain times of the year, but there's like four or five food trucks you could order food from. I saw the food trucks as we were leaving, so unfortunately I did not get a shot of them, but there was definitely like three to four different options on food trucks. Definitely a great brewery, nice one to stop at. Okay, but now we are going to head over and drop the car back off with the owner and at the very least drop Poppy off on the ship. Me and Jack may go do something else after. Well, it it's is our, our anniversary. anniversary. It's hey. our anniversary, so let's go do something fun. I mean, last time we were here, there was a, dis a distillery that had fantastic gin that I know I would definitely like to go back to. I don't know if Jack does, but we'll see. So we'll see you in two seconds of your time. By the time we got back, we were both kind of tired, so we decided just to stay on the ship and do a specialty dining for the dinner. So we were heading up the elevator, and a woman heard us say that it was our anniversary, and she got a free bottle of wine and doesn't drink, so... We just got a bottle of wine for our anniversary. 
We decided to head to Los Lobos, which is the Mexican restaurant on board for our anniversary dinner. We weren't too hungry, so we just shared some chips and salsa, got the homemade guacamole because it's delicious, and then we shared the snapper as the entree. And since we split all this food, which would normally just be for one person, they only charged us for one specialty restaurant, so we still had one left that we could share and do at the next place. And then my beautiful bride of seven years. Who wanted to change, but somebody told me not to. <laughs> I think she was good. So we just finished up a dinner. We did Los Lobos. It was anniversary dinner, so we didn't really film much at all. But it was very tasty. Well, so till next time, get out and live a little. Bye, guys. Stay tuned for the next episode where we head to Skagway, Alaska and explore everything that that town has to offer as well.